It's 2021, and video games with open worlds certainly are not slowing down. So we're gonna round up 20 games with open worlds, hopefully releasing this year. These are the ones we're looking forward to the most. Now, let's get started off with number 20 and talk about Fable. This is the next generation of the now classic Xbox RPG series set in a very fantasy type world that is confirmed, but we don't know much more about it. We don't even know if this will exactly make it in 2021. We don't know if it's completely based off of the original Albion from the old games. We do know that Playground Games is working on it. They've been behind some of the Forza Horizon games, so they know how to make an exciting, engaging open world, but that was with race cars. This is more with swords and magic. It's one of our favorite Xbox series here, not gonna lie, though we will admit that uh, it's higher up on this list because we don't know for sure if it's going to make it in 2021 but yeah next over at number 19 we have atomic heart which if you can see here it looks absolutely incredible it's been recently shown off with new ray tracing graphics and it's this weird concept for a game it seems like it's going for bioshock system shock vibes in terms of rpg and just weird creative world this one taking place in some sort of weird futurist soviet russia thing but interestingly enough this game is going to be build open world which is very different from something like a bioshock or a system shock so we're very curious to see how this is going to work out this game overall though open world or not looks super cool it looks violent it looks weird mysterious even a little scary cool sci-fi stuff going on. So honestly, we've had this on our radar for a while and we're hoping 2021 is the year where it comes out and blows everyone away. Now over at number 18, speaking of things hopefully 2021, Biomutant. We've been talking about this game for years and probably put it on our open world game last year, but this thing has been delayed and delayed and delayed and that's a shame because it looks really cool. This is a big open world action RPG where you make your own little critter and you go out on an adventure. The action and combat style looks really intriguing and engaging and just the world they're building here just seems a bit different than your average open world video game. So that's why we've been most intrigued and we hope we see this sooner rather than later. Next over at number 17, let's talk Stalker 2. For you PC gamers out there, you probably know that Stalker was an incredible franchise and really just changed the way we thought about some PC FPS RPG games. Games. This thing was tense, it required thinking, it was a little scary, and it was just really cool and engaging. And we're happy to see the series make a triumphant return. We've gotten little glimpses here and there, uh, some graphical showcases, uh, some screenshots, some concept art, but we don't know too much about it. But we can presume it is in a somewhat open world. If you're once again wandering the post-apocalyptic landscape, we can't wait to see how that goes. We've seen a lot of irradiated wastelands in video games, but Stalker is always different, and we're hoping that in 2021, it can come out and stand out once again. Next over at number 16, we have Skull and Bones. Yes, that other Ubisoft pirate game. This is another one that's gone dark. It's been quiet for quite some time now. Uh, maybe it was rebooted a little bit in development. Maybe they've reworked where they're going with it, but we do know it is some sort of swashbuckling adventure, seemingly with multiplayer elements. And of course, when it's a pirate game and you're sailing the open seas, that open seas can really be an open world. And we're hoping this is cool. Uh, Ubisoft has done pirates pretty well before. Assassin's Creed Black Flag was awesome. If you were a fan of pirates and if you take that and you combine it with something like some elements of sea of thieves which sounded like what were they, they were going for skull and bones could be pretty awesome considering this has been worked on for a while we're really hoping this open world game shows up in 2021 man Next over at number 15, we have No More Heroes 3, which looks to be the big one. It looks to be the craziest, most exciting No More Heroes yet. Absolutely wacky, grasshopper manufacturer developer style is all over the place here. It was delayed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We know that it is pretty likely coming at some point in 2021. Travis Touchdown makes a return to Santa Destroyer. This time, there are aliens. What more could you really want? As of right now, this is a Nintendo Switch exclusive, which one makes me wonder how big of an open world they can really pack in this thing, but we've seen plenty of open worlds on Switch before, so I don't really have any doubts. As long as it's creative as hell and weird as the other games, that's, that's all we want. Next over at number 14, we have Everwild. This is that new Rare joint. Rare, of course, being the developers most recently behind Sea of Thieves. This is a brand new IP developed specifically for Xbox and PC, and it's been billed as unique and unforgettable experiences await in a natural and magical world. We've gotten, of course, a trailer that has some glimpses of some sort of gameplay. Graphically, art design, it looks damn incredible. And we're just really looking forward to exploring this world, even if we don't know too much about gameplay concepts yet, 
the look of it, the atmosphere, the tone. Rare has done a good job with that in the past. So fingers crossed this one makes it in 2021 and we're jumping into this really cool fantasy world. Next over at number 13, we have one you may not have heard of. It's called Hazel Sky. This has been billed by the developers as a heartfelt adventure about a young engineer facing his destiny and his desires. You're gonna fix ramshackle flying machines and jump, climb, swing, and slide through a beautiful, mysterious world. I'm reading their description because honestly, that's the best way to describe it. Look at this game. I mean, from what you can see, it seems cool. It seems a little creative and it seems a little different than what we've been playing recently. An open world adventure game that's way less about killing stuff and more about engineering and building stuff and using your brain is really cool. We don't see enough of these, so we're really looking forward to it. This is being developed by Coffee Attic Studio and we don't have a release date, but it is slated for 2021. Next over at number 12, we have Gotham Knights. This is the new action RPG Batman game that, as you remember, does not technically take place in the Arkham universe. This is a new situation where Batman and Commissioner Gordon are dead, and it's up to the Bat family to take to the streets and fight the crime, and possibly the Court of Owls, which was teased, which is really cool if you love Batman. Uh, so there's a lot of potential for a Bat family game. These characters, as much as they are embraced by comic book fans, I'd say mainstream culture, doesn't really get exposed to them enough, and and this could just be a lot of fun with cool characters and cool combat. We've also seen traversal around a pretty surprisingly big looking Gotham City with vehicles, teleportation. We wonder how much emphasis there really is gonna be on exploration, but as of right now, the potential seems pretty high. If you love Batman and if you love kicking butt and some maybe some RPG elements dashed in here and there, we're just rooting for Gotham Knights to knock it out in a park. Next over at number 11, we have Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. I I'm gonna be honest, this one is a bit of a guess. It, we don't know for sure if it's open world or not yet, but what we've seen, those glimpses, those gameplay demos, while that was a linear experience, some of the worlds that Ratchet was thrust into during that demo, they looked massive. And considering this game has been worked on for a while, and considering they have the SSD and all the technology behind PlayStation 5 in this thing, this could be one of the more open-ended, bigger Ratchet and Clank games, maybe with just bigger worlds. We've seen some pretty big worlds in Ratchet and Clank before. We wanna see that here, as long as it doesn't really lose focus on what it's trying to do. Depending on how open these worlds are or not, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart just looks damn awesome and we can't wait to play it. Next over at number 10, we have Monster Hunter Rise. This is a new Nintendo Switch Monster Monster Hunter adventure that reminds me very much of the 3DS stuff, but with taking all the stuff they've learned from Monster Hunter World. Monster Hunter World and Monster Hunter Rise were worked on kind of parallel to one another, so elements from both bounce back and forth, and the traversal and verticality here looks damn incredible. Chalking that up with, of course, all of the rest of the cool stuff that came from Monster Hunter World, including big open worlds with less load screens and just good ass action. There was a demo and it seems like people really, really loved it and totally embraced it. And we're gonna get our hands on the game March 26th, 2021. Next over at number nine, we have Avowed. This is the Obsidian RPG. This is Obsidian's Skyrim, if you wanna get really reductive. I think it might be more than that, but essentially this is the one they're making for Xbox since Xbox owns Obsidian now. All we got was a teaser cinematic type of thing. We saw skeletons, we saw swords, we saw castle sieges, we saw bow and arrows, and we saw magic. That's about it. They're building their own world here. Things can get really interesting. Of course, Obsidian is really good at building RPGs and worlds and dialogues and quests and all of that. We're big fans of Obsidian, so we're hoping this is a good one and we're really hoping we see it in 2021 because a big old fantasy world to explore is something we've wanted for a minute now. Especially a new one from Obsidian. You know, space is cool, but let's try some fantasy stuff next. But over at number eight, we have Tachia, if I'm pronouncing that right. This was announced at last year's Game Awards and it made a splash just because of how cool and creative and different it looked. And it's like a tropical themed open world adventure. This is a physics based game with some light puzzles, but there's also interaction with animals and objects that are gonna help you on your quest. As you climb up stuff, you glide around, you swim, you enjoy these uh, beautiful vistas. And I'm not gonna lie, it seems like there's a really good mix of uh, Zelda Wind Waker and Breath of the Wild kind of thrown together with a good artsy creative indie spin, especially the fact that your character can play a ukulele. That's just cool. I don't know. Anyway, I digress. Next at number seven is Starfield. Yes, we're going to throw this on the list. We would love to see it in 2021. Maybe it's wishful thinking. 
Maybe it's not. Starfield, for those of you that don't know, is the next Bethesda game, you know, the creators of Skyrim. Now, they have come under scrutiny in recent years by some fans with some moves they've made, but I'll, I'll put that aside and just say, hey, Starfield seems like a game that they really want to make. A cool, creative, new sci-fi RPG thing where I I'm assuming it's going to be open world because it's space, and most of the time, open space we consider open world. And it's new IP from Bethesda, who's kind of just been working on Elder Scrolls and Fallout franchises for a minute now, so it's nice to see something new from them. How big is it gonna be? We don't know. When is it actually going to release? We don't know for sure, but we know this is coming well before the next Elder Scrolls, so hopefully we see it this year. Next over at number six, of course, we have Elden Ring, the next From Software game, the long-awaited From Software game. The game that they announced, and then that was it. They left us all hanging, and every single time there's a game event or new bits of game news, we think it's gonna be an Elden Ring announcement, but no, nothing. The story and world building, of course, has been worked on in collaboration with George R.R. R. Martin of Game of Thrones fame, and the early talk said that this is From Software's most ambitious game to date, and it's apparently the biggest and possibly open world. We're really excited to see where this fantasy epic adventure type thing takes us. All we have still is this teaser trailer. We don't know anything, but we're really hoping 2021 is the year, baby. But over at number five, we have State of Decay 3, which was announced at the tail end of 2020 with a really, really exciting little cinematic teaser trailer that doesn't tell me too much about the game other than that it seems to be set in the winter and deers and animals can be zombies now, which is potentially really cool. Now, State of Decay 2, has come a long way. Undead Labs has updated the game more and more and made it pretty damn good. Fans have seemingly been pretty happy with it, so a third game could really blow the roof off of everything. Since this is like an Xbox thing, it's probably gonna take advantage of the Xbox Series X and PC, and we're excited to just see how they can come up with a new spin on a formula that's already really good. Like, their gameplay is cool, it's interesting. Their spin on the zombie genre has been noted, but how can they shake it up? We're hoping State of Decay 3 does something, and we're hoping we see it this year. Now over at number four, we have Dying Light 2, another open world zombie game, one that has been de delayed indefinitely, but we still think we're gonna see it in 2021, maybe towards the end, but still. This game was shaping up to be absolutely incredible with a big, massive world set seemingly many years after the original Dying Light where things are even worse, little micro communities are popping up, there's some oppression, there's some weird organizations, there's some unsavory characters that you need to deal with on top of just, you know, the whole zombie infestation thing. Also, with the fact that in this game, the quests you take on, the decisions you make in the story are all going to actually affect the world around you, not just visually, but some gameplay ramifications too. We're really excited to see how that can go down, especially considering Dying Light, the originals, gameplay, the core gameplay mechanics, the combat, the running was awesome. And now, if they're doubling down with story and world building, we're all in. Now down to number three, we have Breath of the Wild 2, another one that's been quiet for a little while at the time of making this video. It was announced, and then uh, that's it. We gotta see it in 2021, right? Considering Breath of the Wild was very much open world, we're gonna assume that Breath of the Wild 2 also is. There was a rumor early on of like some co-op multiplayer type of stuff between Link and Zelda. Who knows if that's actually gonna be a thing. What I'm just excited for is like the actual world and concepts they've built, the story and everything going on between Breath of the Wild and the Hyrule Warriors games is pretty sweet. So where are they going to take it in Breath of the Wild 2? I don't know, man, but I'm willing to sign up. Next over at number two, we have Far Cry 6, which has been delayed, but we know it is coming in 2021. And Far Cry games are, of course, open world as hell. And we assume that 6 is going to be no different. This time around, Giancarlo Esposito is the main villain. You may know him as Gustavo Fring from Breaking Bad or Moff Gideon from The Mandalorian. And he's a perfect fit. Cool. Yeah. But what I'm more interested in is the gameplay itself. The game takes place on a fictional island called Yara and there's a whole dictatorship. That's of course where Giancarlo Esposito's character comes in and you apparently play as a guerrilla fighter who is attempting to bring it all down. And this new game world which is inspired by Cuba is said to be the largest Far Cry game world to date. Which is pretty interesting, especially considering that they've said that a large part of the map is actually going to be a city. So Far Cry gameplay in a city is interestingly enough, and if you add in the, all the animals and stuff which are coming back that you can hire, and more makeshift style weapons and crafting, with that revolution theme, this could all be really, really cool. We were originally going to see this February 2021, but of course because of COVID it has been delayed, but maybe it'll still squeak in this year. 
But down at number one, we have Horizon Forbidden West. This is the next big PlayStation 5 game. It's also gonna be on PS4, but it is the next step in Aloy's adventure, presumably with a much bigger world from that initial reveal trailer. The location looked absolutely stunning and massive and sprawling and really cool. This is unfortunately another one that we don't have much to go on, but we can expect to see new creatures, new cultures, new gadgets to take down these beasts, and hopefully, probably, presumably, some really pretty graphics too. We're really excited for this one, and I gotta say, even though we don't have a ton of information about it now, I expect us to talk about it a lot more in the near future. So there you have it. Those are 20 open world games to look forward to, hopefully all in 2021, but we wanna hear from you guys in the comments what games you're looking forward to. Do they have an open world or do they not? Are you sick of open worlds or do you love them to death? Let's talk anything open world game from 2021 down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, maybe learned about a new game, clicking the like button does really help us out. We would appreciate that. But if you're new, also consider subscribing, maybe hitting that notification bell because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.